Textile Mill Baseball was a source of hometown pride, bragging rights, and wholesome entertainment. Shakola Mills owners wanted the best and most talented players available. To field a winning team, players were recruited from other mill teams and even the minor leagues. The Shakola Mill owners found ways to entice and keep the best players. The mill started checking around, finding players. They'd come there and want a job. Jobs was hard to get back in. They'd give these guys a different town and give them a job, a little old light job, messing around, toting water, or a little nothing, you know, to play ball on Wednesday. But they're trying to get the best ball players so they could win. My understanding that they would go to Florida during spring training, and some of the players that were not going to make it in the majors, uh, the different mill companies went after them to come and play textile baseball for their for their mill. They got more money than, than the mill workers. A skilled mill worker, they probably made uh, right at $12 a week. And I've been told some of these baseball players, when they came to town, they made $25 a week. And so they didn't, they didn't do any manual work. They just more or less played baseball. Uh, and the mill company looked after these guys because it was a way of life and everybody enjoyed baseball. It just cost 25 cents to get in. And this little boy was standing there looking through a knot hole, looking at the ball game. In case a foul ball came over the fence, he could get that foul ball and go into the park to see the ball game. Inside of each of these houses, counted by the ball players, there were numerous fans of all ages. They, they had a crowd. And that was a, that was a big way of life for people on the village to go and watch these baseball teams play. Early players made a great impression on the young boys, inspiring them to pursue baseball. Shad, who was probably the best ball player, that's ever played in the Honey Path. Hit a home run over the left field fence. He was a little guy in statue, but he hit that one out of the park. And Shad was my hero when he played. They called, called Mama, told Mama how to play for him and uh, get somebody to meet him. Of course, me being a young little old boy, I had taken me to death to me a ball player. Shag Knott spent over 40 years in Honeypath influencing the quality and integrity of baseball play. I would have loved for you to have seen him on that ball field. He was graceful, you know, he was just as graceful as he could be out on that ball field. He was a, he was a wonderful ball player and a wonderful person. Oh, the best ball player? Shag, I say Shag Knott when I was growing up. He was just a good shortstop. He could hit and play ball. He, he had a good batting, they call it a batting average. He had a good batting average. He was on his way to uh, Moultrie, Georgia. He was working his way up to, to the major leagues. When he got to Honeypath, he just fell in love with the people. So that was the reason he stayed there. From the story of the train station all the way to the baseball field, McDavid Carr, a mentee of Shad, contributed to the local baseball scene. Uh, David Carr also was a, was a real good baseball player. However, David Carr is probably the one who has preserved the history of textile baseball in Honeypath. David Carr, he was a good outfielder. He was fast. Uh, I run the hunter. 100 yard day by 10 3. So every time I pop up, they holler, David. And I have to run a country mile again. Pop up when the second baseman is short up, they'd be standing out there watching. <laughs> Al Evans, a famous catcher who made it to the big leagues to play with the Washington Senators, brought a lot of fun to the local game. Bill Womack, Chick's pitcher, recalled one day when Al Evans was carving a potato in the dugout. During the next inning, Womack threw a strike to his catcher, who proceeded to throw a wild ball over the first baseman's head. However, as the base stealing runners came into home play, Evans pulled the real ball out of his mitt and tagged him out. The Equinox Mill team protested, but all the referee could answer was that there was no rule 
prohibiting a potato from being thrown on the field. Virgil Stalkup, another Shakola player, went on to play for the Cincinnati Reds. Well, Virgil Stalkup was the was the only player that I actually knew from Honey Pie that made it all the way to the majors. It was a great day when the boys of summer played. They each were extraordinary ball players who left their marks on the Honeypath, South Carolina community. But the best ball player ain't never been discovered. I mean, they didn't have a chance. They had to go to work when they were 16 years old, and they had to quit school. And they had some good-looking ball players back then, fast and all. They were little. They was under nurse, I think, <laughs> what they are now. <laughs> but they were good athletes.